What's up? What's up? What's up, honey? It's your girl, Miss J. She's back with another video. And y'all know what day it is. It is Wine Down Friday. Wine Down Friday. Thank God for Jesus for Friday. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, so this Wine Down Friday is going to be a continuation of how I met Stan. So let's call this one part two. Now I think where we left off at, oh, first of all, if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit that bell so you can get alert every time I drop a video. And if you're visiting your girl again, thank you love. Thank you so much for the visit. I really appreciate it. I don't take your time for granted and I know time is valuable. We all work. We all have children, you know, most of us. And if we don't, we take care of other people's kids <laughs> or doing something for somebody else. Everybody has something to do. So thank you so much for the time. Now, y'all know that thing I like? Thumbs up. And leave me a comment. Talk to me. Tell me what you have today. So you know what I did today? I took my wine and put it in some juice. <laughs> Try something different. I need to, you know how that is. Want to do a little different because I know that I'm sipping very light today because I'm talking about, you know, the continuation of Stan and how blessed I feel both of us are to just be in each other's present. You know, that's just the way it is. So I think I didn't go into as much detail the first time of um, Shamley introducing uh stan and i i think i did though and then i went into how she said don't put the short dress on you know i did that and how he came down to visit he did i remember uh just before stan had came down to visit me stan was going to no it was after he came down to visit me him and his friend larry was going to saint martin that's what it was they was going to saint martin for a week and he sent me some flowers he did. He sent me some flowers because I happened to call him. I think it was at his job. And he said, <laughs> he said when he picked up the phone, he heard my voice instantly. And something went aroused. <laughs> He's like, I'm about to send this chick some flowers. And so he sent me some flowers. That started the just because flowers. He knew I like flowers and he sent me some flowers. I thought that was so sweet. So what I did was when I got the flowers, honey, I went and put me a blonde wig on. I don't even know why I did blonde because I love all kind of wigs. But I did put a blonde wig on and I took a picture. <laughs> and I sent it to him while he was still at work. And he hadn't, because uh, I think he was leaving to go to New York that night. At that time, Larry lived in Georgia now, but at that time, Larry was living in New York, and so they was flying out of JFK. Mm-hmm. Mm. Divine. Mm. I can tell you it's a little different, but divine. Divine. And so uh, he went to uh, St. Martin. He stayed in St. Martin for one whole week. He sure did. He was on vacation. And so when he got uh, back from St. Martin, uh, he went back to work. And that Friday he came uh, down again. So what happened was Stan would fly in a lot. Um, he drove, uh, drove down. Drove. <laughs> he drove down. Maybe before he actually moved down I want to say probably four or five times but all the other times he would fly down he would come in for a weekend and then go back um, come in sometime that Friday and he would go back that Monday early in the morning I would get up real real early and drive back up to Raleigh to drop him off at the uh, airport because he would leave um, from the airport and go straight to work too because he had to go back to work that monday and so he was flying out at the last minute and a uh, daycare didn't start until i want to say at that time my daycare kids wasn't coming until about 6 45 was the earliest one of them was coming and now thank god for jesus they ain't coming to like 7 7 15 hallelujah he's so good mm -hmm. 
His mercy and grace is all that we need in a bag of chip, honey. <laughs> and so he would come down pretty often, I have to say, um, to go out to dinner, to uh, take me up to Raleigh, uh, to the comedy club. And at the same time, uh, he would take my uh, kids too. So how Stan uh, did it, which I thought was really nice, um, I talk about it in another video too, is um, say if he came down this weekend here, then him and I would go out maybe twice on the weekend. And then when he came down the final weekend, he would take all four of us out. So he dated me as well as dating my sons, uh, getting to know them and being present uh, in the situation so that the relationship could work. And I really think it did help to be honest with you because I remember, I don't know if it was in the last video, uh, when I went in the kitchen to say to my sons that I wanted to um, start dating that was even before the first time Stan had came down. Um, we were in the kitchen uh, having dinner, and I had said to my son about um, me starting to date, and uh, what did they think about it? Because I believe that the decision has to be made as a whole in order for it to work. It can't be partial. Like it can't be, oh, mommy gonna do mommy. You know, regardless of what the kids say, because the kids are innocent at that time. My kids was very young. Um, they now. Well, if they were grown, it would be a horse of a different color. Then I don't have to get their approval. I would love their approval or I would love for all of us to get along. But when they're young like they are and you bring in someone in their space, I think it has to be a decision that everybody have to make. And so I remember who was in the kitchen and I said to my uh, two boys, um, and okay, let me tell you what I said. I said to him, I said, oh, I had um, met this guy and we have been talking on the telephone. And so he's thinking of coming down uh, for a weekend. Um, so what do y'all think about me dating? No, I didn't go that until afterwards. I said to him, what do y'all think about me uh, if I started seeing someone, is what I said. And my older son said to me, he said, I don't need a daddy. I said, you're right, you don't need a daddy because you already have, uh, you had a really good father. And he did. I'm not going to take that from him because their father was very good as well as a good everything, if I can say. It's hard to put in words how good he was to his kids as well as to his wife. So I said to him, I said, I can tell you this here. What Stan would bring to the table would be the things that you're going to forget because you're so young, you know, because at that time, I think Ronson was 11, but he had lost his father when he was eight. You're not going to remember that he went to work every day and brought home his, his paycheck. You're not going to remember he paid all the bills here and your mom sit at home for a long time and did not even work. You're not going to remember that. He's not going to remember all the vacations that we went on. Um, even though my husband didn't like to fly, of the times we went down to Myrtle Beach at least five times out of a year. We went to um, Florida every Sunday, I mean, every Christmas. Uh, we went for one week. We were always in Florida at Walt Disney World for Christmas. He's not going to remember none of that. He's not going to remember the weeks that we all went down. He'll remember the weeks we went down to Myrtle Beach because we still do that as a whole family. Like my siblings, all of us get together and have a whole week together. He might remember... Um, Thanksgiving because we still do that now. So it's a lot of stuff about my uh, husband and his dad he wasn't going to remember. Well, I said to him, those are the things that Stan will be able to bring to the table for you. He's going to be able to teach you how to be a good provider for your family. He's going to be able to teach you how to be good to your wife. How to date with inside of a marriage or a relationship. So he said to me... <laughs> He said, but I guess. And that started how we actually started dating. Because for me, if I'm being honest, at that time it was very important that my sons was on board with me seeing someone else. You know, especially bringing that person into their space because I seen people. It is what it is. <laughs> I just didn't bring them into their space, you know. I'm human, I'm a woman. And remember at that time he had been deceased for three years. 
So it was a lot of good uh, stuff happened. It's a lot of good stuff still happening, if I'm being totally honest with you. This is all real early on uh, in the relationship um, that set the example. I did like the idea of when he first came down <laughs> after talking all that long time on the phone and he looked at me. I promise you it was in the kitchen. I had made him some food and it was in the kitchen. He said that, um, I know that, you know, this is our first time meeting and stuff. He said, but um, I really would like it if you consider uh, let's get married. And I said, you want to marry a chick already? You just, you know, saw me for the first time. And his answer was, he wanted to set a good example for my sons. He wanted them to know that he was in it for the long haul and not just dropping in for a second. <laughs> oh my God, I'm serious. That's how good he is. He was thinking some other than me in him. Which I thought was great because uh, before he even came down, him and I were talking on the telephone a lot. And I remember one time he was saying to me, uh, after we had talked for a minute, he didn't say it right away. But he said, oh, he was just talking on the telephone, you know, as, okay, well, we'll be friends. He said, especially when I had said to him I had two young kids. And he had already at that time had been in his 60s. No, maybe his late 50s. I don't remember. Don't get me the line. <laughs> It had to be 50s. He was in his 50s, 60s. He was in his 60s. Probably just turning 60, maybe. Maybe not yet. Maybe 59. I don't know. Okay, so let's just say 60s. He was in. And he has said to me, Lord, please let Lewis get the phone. And he had said to me um, that. I'm sorry. I'm distracted by that. He had said to me on the telephone that he was not interested in dating someone that had young kids because he wanted to retire and travel a lot. He said because he had got to know me and he got to know my kids is what made him change his mind. Because, like I said, his, his uh, son and his daughter was already grown. They were grown-ups. His son is... um in his 40s um, and so is Gina she's in her 40s too yeah they're both in their 40s so yeah he was he has a grandson that's the same age my baby his oldest grandson same age my baby same exact age mm -hmm. then there's uh, two underneath him and I told y'all on Father's Day video mm -hmm. So it's a lot that goes into when you first meet a person. I should do a part three because I haven't even scratched the surface. I just wanted to touch on all the most important parts that I think when him and I first met. The consideration that he had that I was a single mom. Um, the consideration that he had that I had lost my husband as well as he had lost his wife. And the consideration that he had about my children that I had two sons that he wanted to set good examples for. I thought that was the sweetest thing ever. And he has been doing just what he said, setting good example for my kids. Now, you know me, I'm the mama. So I guess I'm a little more strict. Clutch down. <laughs> Stan, he easy going. So whenever they have something going on, honey child, Stan is the one. Stan taught my older son how to drive. Thank God for Jesus he did because I think, I don't know. I don't know because I see him as still my little baby, um, but he's not. He's 19. The same thing with Lewis. Lewis is uh, learning how to drive. Stan will teach Lewis how to drive too. Thank you, honey, for loving me. And I thank God for sending him me <laughs> and not nobody else. <laughs> thank you, Lord, <laughs> for favor. Favor this chick needed, honey. Well, I'm going to cut it off there because my 15 minutes is up. And you know I got to go. Because I can talk forever when I'm talking about something on the road. I have to always remember to look at the time. <laughs> but y'all know what time it is in here. It's time to turn the lights out in here, boo. Deuces. Peace. Your girl is out.